My name is Bob Van Sickle. I am one of three founders and president of Thor Systems. We manufacture surge protection. These products have evolved and developed over 30 years of our direct experience with seven companies who manufacture power quality products. Power Distribution, United Power, Delta, Innovative Technology, Danaher, Current Technology, and Jocelyn. It is our objective to redefine product value in our marketplace, providing uncompromising product performance and exceeding expectations for all with whom we conduct business. We appreciate the opportunity to make this power quality surge protection pr presentation, which will provide the information for correctly applying, effectively specifying, and accurately sizing surge protection for specific applications. The whole system's history began with our first generation TBSS, developed throughout 15 years spent at United Power, which was a great learning experience. The second generation of TBSS was developed at Thor Systems, requiring eight months during startup. This only used state-of-the-art product was manufactured for only three years. The third generation surge protective devices, SPDs, required a total redesign of an entire product line, which took a full year, including the new UL1449 third edition testing. This major effort was driven by the headwinds of change. Our focus in culture is to be the technology leader providing a hybrid design featuring high performance, full surge rated products. Utilizing stack tracks, which defines our heavy copper, low impedance, parallel surge path design used to divert transient energy away from protected equipment. We offer modular SPDs for the highest level of surge protection, typically applied at service entrance and main distribution locations, and our non-modular SPDs for lower opacity, distribution, sub-distribution, and branch circuits. We use advanced applied technologies and innovative features to enhance our products as well as anticipate the needs of our customers. We train and promote correctly sizing surge protection for each specific application. This presentation will begin with our second generation products, continuing to the events leading to the development and introduction of our third generation of surge protection. Design philosophy. This image shows Thor Systems second generation hybrid design TBSS. The components are, first, silicon avalanche diodes, SADs. The SAD is an ideal suppression element. Its fast turn on speed increases system longevity. The SAD is a shock absorber to the MOV. The SAD negatives are low power capacity and high cost. The second component are large block 34 millimeter square dual disc 80 kA rated metal oxide varistors, MOVs. Third, each MOV is fed by a 80 kA surge rated fuse, which provides the ability to deliver 100% of the surge rated value. Fourth, filter capacitors suppress EMI, RFI, high frequency noise. Eliminating data errors, lockups, and reboots, all of which are costly to automated manufacturing and processing operations. And fifth, all hybrid components are interconnected with stack tracks providing parallel, low impedance surge pathways, which divert transient energy away from the customer's critical equipment. Design philosophy continued. Component design concepts. The Thor design philosophy has always been based on a small number of large block MOVs. The component of choice was a 34 millimeter square dual disc MOV rated at 80 kA. Each MOV is paired with an 80 kA surge rated fuse, which provides the ability to deliver 100% of the surge rating. 
Many competitors provide a large number of small 18mm MOVs. 7 to 14 small MOVs are required to supply 80KA. The problem with applying large numbers of small MOVs is cascading failures. Which small MOV is the first to fail? How do I know that? Because it is the one with the lowest impedance, which is also the best performer. Which is the next to fail? The next best performer. See the TVSS assembly image. Six small MOVs have failed. Two were vaporized. This is why Thor system does not use small MOVs. Catastrophic failures. Hit winds of change. To this point, we have been discussing our second generation TVSS. The products were less than three years old. The entire product line was abandoned. The headwinds of change were brought on by a number of catastrophic, end-of-life TVSS failures. Introduction. The switchgear manufacturers decided to enter the TVSS market with their own brands. They acquired TVSS products. Value engineered the TVSS, then integrated into their switchgear direct bus mounted. Having large sales organizations and established distribution provided a number of facility installations in a short period of time. Then the problems began. Catastrophic, end of life, thermal runaway, with arc flashes causing collateral damage resulting in facility shutdowns. A number of arc flash induced system shutdowns occurred, shutting down hospitals, manufacturing operations, automated processing, and a number of other critical applications. These events prompted us to write a white paper, Concerns of TVSS Integral to Switchgear and Panel Boards. The switchgear manufacturers claim they would simplify TVSS specifications. The reality is they specified a sole source, low-end TVSS, for which the customer paid a higher price as this TVSS was integrated in the switchgear and not separately detailed or evaluated. Their next claim, the Rec Bus Mounted TBSS, provides lower impedance improved performance. The reality is the Rec Bus Mounting provides a much higher risk of collateral damage, contaminating the customer's electrical distribution and ultimate critical shutdowns. Serviceability requiring deionization of equipment to replace modules and having all flash concerns during normal operations is a very serious concern. Failures continued. No one wanted to talk about these events. See the circle photo. TVSS, end of life, thermal runaway, catastrophic failure, arc flash, collateral damage, and facility shutdowns. Customers lost services and were left with unusable electrical distribution. The switchgear manufacturers faced litigation issues. The increased frequency of these events drove the realization additional fail-safe testing was necessary. The switchgear manufacturers deal with safety every day. They sell coordination. They integrated TVSS direct bus mounted without proper testing into their core products without coordination and then wondered why they had problems. The switchgear manufacturers formed a lobby. They went to UL, requested fail-safe testing. The lobby wanted a quick solution. Modify only the abnormal limited current test, which raises the maximum operating voltage of the CVSS, holds the voltage elevated, and runs limited current test, which was a maximum of 5 amps, changed to 1,000 amps to assure fail-safe to pass testing. See photos showing three manufacturers, all having TVSS direct bus mounted. There were four quick, easy solutions available to all manufacturers. First, undersized fusing. Second, thermal cutouts. Third, fuse links. Fourth, encapsulation with sand, silica, or epoxy. All four of these solutions promote premature failure, 
leaving the customer's critical equipment unprotected. UL 1449 third edition had been approved and was going into effect three years later, which included the second edition revision plus a number of other redefined tests were required. Thor Systems considered the second edition revision a band-aid. We stopped manufacturing, redesigned the entire TVSS product line, every design, printed circuit board, and enclosure was changed, taking 11 full months, including the all-new third edition testing. Thor Systems was the first TVSS SPD manufacturer to pass UL 1449 third edition, a full two years before the mandated effective date. The UL 1449 third edition replaced TVSS with SPD, surge protective device. The solution, the TP MOV. The thermally protected MOV, the TP MOV, was developed by Farah Shami to eliminate the failure characteristics of metal oxide resistors. The TPMOV provides full surge rating with a fail-safe design. We've been buying our fuses and working with Farage for many years at United Power and Thor Systems. The power quality industry knew catastrophic failures were occurring. No one yet had the solution. Farage was working on a new design, developing an encased MOV defined as a thermally protected MOV, the TPMOV. Removing this cover exposes a blue 34 mm square single disc MOV rated 50 kA. Farage reduced the cross-sectional area of one leg, which was soldered to the single disc. This reduced cross-sectional area generated the necessary heat to desolder the, the leg in time-related overloads. A double offset was added to this thin leg creating a natural spring. This thin leg assured thermal separation as the leg moved away from the disc, the core spring-loaded phenolic shutter, which was captivated under the leg, moves upward, becoming an isolation barrier, an arc shield, which assured fail-safe operation at all UL abnormal testing levels, yet maintained the ability to survive a 50 kA transient event. The TPMV has two modes of status indication. Physical indication, two pins on the spring-loaded shutter protrude through two apertures in the cover top. And remote indication, the release shutter operates a micro-switch provided with Form C contacts within the cover. The TPMV became the new building block for the Thor system's modular and non-modular SPDs. Performance Limiting Solutions These pictures of surge protection products by other manufacturers show a number of performance limiting designs to take a failing SPD offline. These photos show undersized fusing, fuse links, thermal cutouts, encapsulation using sand or epoxy to contain cascading failures. Photo Reviews Figure 1 shows fuse lengths plus thermal cutouts, 80 kA SPD with 9 kA cutouts, plus sand encapsulation. Figure 2 uses epoxy encapsulation shown failed. Figure 3 uses fuse lengths plus sand encapsulation. Figure 4 uses undersized fusing, 80 kA SPD with 20 kA fuses. Figure 5 uses sand encapsulation. Figure 6 uses fuse link, failed open, plus epoxy encapsulation. Figure 7 shows undersized fusing, 80 kA SPD with 20 kA fusing, plus enca epoxy encapsulation. All the above cause premature SPD failures. Introducing third generation products. Every design all printed circuit boards and enclosures were changed, providing unique solutions and offering an array of world-class products, bringing a new level of performance to the surge protection market. 
Our third generation products were a strong response to the unique challenges presented by UL 1449 2.5 revision and the third edition, while maintaining the ability of delivering full rated surge protection to the customer. This development strengthened and expanded our product offering, optimizing performance, quality, durability, and end user value were our key design parameters. The new product development set the pace of change rather than reacting to change. Thor Systems was the first manufacturer to complete UL 1449 third edition testing, a full two years before the mandatory compliance date. Tile architecture is used for both modular, TSR, field replaceable, multi-tile designs, and TSN, non-field replaceable, single tile designs. Thor Systems' new products outpace its peers across every metric of design, performance, packaging, quality, and value. Our third generation development was an ambitious, exciting undertaking made more challenging by the fact we did not compromise the ability to deliver their full surge protection rating. The development took shape ever more clearly as we completed the design platforms, system configurations, and product testing. Modular TSR Products Thor System's second and third generations of modular TSR surge protection are shown. Their design features are hybrid two and three tier designs with multi-layer printed circuit boards using five ounce by four hundred thousandths wide traces, mounted on heavy copper bus structure using copper bus bars and copper hex bars. Third generation design changes included thermally protected MOVs replacing MOVs. Multi-tile design printed circuit boards replace single base printed circuit boards. Applications and equipment criticality defined using three-tier industrial or two-tier commercial SPDs. Design philosophy. TSR modular copper bus structure. The left-hand image shows a TSR modular back pan assembly showing its heavy copper bus structure rated 150 kA per mode with a 60 amp fuse disconnect providing surge rated fuses. The right-hand image shows a TSR back pan assembly rated 300 kA per mode. The center image is a number 6 rope lay low impedance wire which has seven twisted groups of 37 strands per group, having 259 strands, versus number six AWG THHN with 19 strands. This high strand count increases the wire surface area, which reduces the impedance at 40 to 50 kilohertz, the frequency of transient events, improving SPD performance six to 12%. The TSR Modular Multi-Tile Design features individual field replaceable modules. Each individual module has very bright green and red LEDs used for status indication. Green LED illuminated indicates operational. Red LED illuminated indicates a component failure and the form C contact is also operated for remote indication. Each module has a numerical code which is the maximum continuous operating voltage, the MCOV of the device. And the color code is also based on the MCOV, i.e. red is for 320 MCOV, purple is for 150 MCOV. As these modules are field replaceable, we were concerned the color and numerical code may be overlooked. This concern prompted the implementation of a pin and sleeve design, five apertures, four of which will be soldered closed, spaced around one of the two mounting bolts, and a steel pin is set for proper orientation to assure the correct module will be installed for the specific voltage configuration of the application. Stack Tracks defines the heavy copper multiple parallel low impedance paths 
used to direct transient energy away from protected equipment. All modular SPDs use multi-tile design, shown are seven individual 300KA tiles arranged in a defined pattern to be assembled on a modular bus structure. The configuration shown is for a three-phase Y four-wire plus ground. Shown is a third-generation TSRI 200 modular SPD. The back pan assembly has three field replaceable modules removed to show the solid copper bus structure. This TSRI three-tier industrial design provides life of the installation warranty. The TSRI industrial and the TSRC commercial modular SPDs rated 50 to 300 kA per mode are recommended for service entrance and main distribution applications. Typically higher ampacity 400 to 6,000 amps, where protected equipment criticality is a vital concern. Options shown are integral fuse disconnect having surge rated fusing and an industrial three-tier TSRI modular SPD, which ensures longevity. These are three third-generation TSN non-modular SPDs. They are compact, high-performance, non-modular surge-protective devices. They are UL1449 4th edition listed. Products are rated 50, 100, and 150 kA per mode or 100, 200, and 300 kA per phase. Models are available in all typical voltage configurations. All three non-modular products are available in two design configurations. The TSNI Industrial is a three-tier design using SADs, TPMOVs, and filter capacitors. The TSNC Commercial is a two-tier hybrid design using TPMOVs and filter capacitors. Three monitoring options are available for all models. Type 1 includes a system green and red LED. Type 2 includes the system green and red LEDs plus a user programmable surge counter and auto alarm with silence button. Type 3 includes the system green and red LEDs and auto alarm with silence button. The TSNs are pre-wired with number 10 AWG low impedance wire. The TSNI uses rope lay and the TSNC uses MTW. All TSN enclosures are NEMA 4X rated, utilizing transparent covers, which provides the means for the customer to see firsthand the features, workmanship, and design put into these products. TSNI Non-Modular Industrial Design this is a three-tier hybrid single-tile design which provides a life of the installation warranty. It includes SADs, TPMOVs, and filter capacitors. These components are placed in close proximity to each other, interconnected using stack tracks, low impedance parallel diversion surge paths. Stack tracks provides the means to condense the product package size, which increases the overall system performance. All manufacturers can buy heavy copper. Why don't they? First is cost. Second is less than 5% of the printed circuit board manufacturers can produce these heavy copper PCBs. Heavy copper is a good conductor of electrical current. It is also a good conductor of heat. During the PCB plating process, with conventional plating equipment, the plating material cools and puddles. Heavy copper plating requires specialized, very high heat equipment. These heavy copper multiple parallel surge pads are key elements in providing improved surge protection. These are third generation product options. Figure one 
is TSR extended EFI RFI high frequency 40 to 50 kilohertz electrical noise filter. Figure 2 is a TSR three-tier industrial design with 15,000 watt SADs and filter capacitors. Figure 3 is a TSR integral fuse disconnect which provides surge rated fuses. Figure 4 is TSN surge counter which is field programmable. Figure 5 is a multifunction relay which monitors phase loss over and under voltage with time delay output contacts. Figure 6 is TSR modular integral surge counter. Figure 7 is a TSN three-tier hybrid industrial design with 15,000 watt SADs, modular and non-modular industrial three-tier SPDs provide life of the installation warranty. This is our third generation application guide, which is a review of the topics we have discussed. Figure 1, TPMOVs provide a fail-safe design. Figure 2, hybrid design utilizing SADs, TPMOVs, and filter capacitors. Figure 5, modular TSR design, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, and 300 kA per mode. Figure 6, rope lay wire is a low impedance connection wire. Figure 8, modular TSR back pan assembly showing solid all copper bus structure. Figure 9, modular TSR extended filter for suppressing high frequency electrical noise. Figures 11, 12, and 13 are non modular designs, 50, 100, and 150K per mode. Figure 14, all surge protection components are interconnected by stack tracks, providing low impedance surge pass to divert transient energy away from sensitive electronic gear. Figure 15, electrical EFI RFI high frequency noise causes data errors, lockups, restarts, and reboots. Figure 16, graph shows 34 millimeter large block MOVs have 100 times greater pulse life than 20 millimeter MOVs used by some manufacturers. Figure 18, schematic showing SADs in parallel to TPMOVs and filter capacitors. Power quality problems. Are external sources a high or a low percentage of the problems? Examples of external transients. Lightning, utility grid switching, traffic accidents, ice and snowstorms taking down transmission lines, contractors mistakenly cutting underground lines. Many people believe they are a high percentage of the problems. Typically their magnitude is higher, however the frequency of event is low less than 20%. The power quality industry relates 80% of the problems are caused from within the facility. What causes facility generated problems? Electrical demand changes. Press the start button on a large induction motor. The coils magnetize, the motor spins up. This is not a transient event. If anything, it's a sag. The problem occurs when the stop button is pressed. The magnetic field collapses and the magnetizing energy flows right back into the distribution system. This is a transient event that happens continuously. The types of failure. First is catastrophic failure. Immediate equipment failures, 98% of which show no visual damage. Second, degradation over time. The system of components fail seemingly without cause. Think of water dripping on a concrete floor which is erosion of the concrete. Transients are a constant degradation of an electrical insulation system within components. For example, motors, controllers, and integrated logic chips. Third, system disruptions. High frequency electrical noise, EFI, RFI, cause unexplained elusive lockups, 
data errors, and restarts, which are very disruptive and costly to automated systems and manufacturing processes. Protected equipment history. Logic chips had 50 transistors, 0 to 5 volt operating voltage, which changed to 0 to 3 volt, and now 0 to 1 volt. Why the changes? First, faster settling time, which improved performance. Second, reduced voltage potential, providing a more condensed package. And third, improved processing made control logic more affordable. That same chip now can have thousands of transistors, improved processing speed, reduced cost, providing a more affordable logic controls, which expanded applications. For an example, process control, computers, automated manufacturing facilities, Linear power supplies were large, expensive, having big magnetics and capacitors. Engineers were tasked to develop an improved, smaller, more efficient, and less costly replacement. The solution was a switch mode power supply with improved speed, regulation, reduced cost, size, and improved efficiency. This new technology brought on many advantages. However, without the large magnetic and capacitors, it, pri it provides no buffer whatsoever to far more sensitive and vulnerable electronic controls, which have now become commonplace across industrial, commercial, and residential applications. Now we have super sensitive electronics with no protection. In the past, surge protection had been used in critical applications. Today, there is no application that would not benefit from surge protection, not one. This is a grounding application guide, AG01. It is a consolidation of white papers, which were published in a number of technical magazines. This application guide addresses grounding issues. Surge protection will not perform correctly without proper ground bonding. See the pictorial drawing on the top and the schematic on the bottom. Both show examples which address proper ground bonding all to the same potential. Tie every grounding system component to the same potential, including the data and communication grounds. The grounding system components. First, service entrance ground. Second, driven ground rods. Third, building structural steel. Fourth, perimeter ground ring. Fifth, steel and copper pipes. Sixth, concrete rebar. 7. Buried ground plates 8. Data telecom grounds 9. TVSS SPD grounds Critical applications are required to be less than 5 ohms and industrial applications less than 10 ohms. Grounding must be properly addressed to assure maximum surge protection performance. Ground testing. We use and recommend AEMC clamp-on ground resistance testers, model 3711 and 3731 for measuring and verifying grounds. Site Risk Assessment Many engineers have asked us, how should we size surge protection? Our answer is use the Thor Systems Site Risk Assessment Spreadsheet which was developed using seven susceptibility factors to assure consistent, correct sizing of surge protection for a wide variety of applications. After completing the seven risk assessment factors, which define a specific application, the factors are totaled to determine the recommended surge current rating, Ka, per mode. Another question we are frequently asked, where should surge protection be applied? First, service entrance it is the highest level of exposure. Second, automatic transfer switches and distribution panels feeding critical applications. Third, voltage level changes in the electrical distribution system. Fourth, equipment generating transients such as large motors, transformers, power factor correction capacitors, and welding equipment. 
After defining the SPD locations, the seven susceptibility factors are applied for sizing the surge protection for each application. We will use an example to show how the risk assessment works. A 4,000 amp, 480, 277 volt AC, three phase, Y, four wire, plus ground with automatic transfer switch located in Dallas, Texas. The factors are F1, ampacity of the installation, 4,000 amps, value 9. F2, geographical location of the installation. Reference the two maps at the bottom of the spreadsheet. On the left-hand side is an isokinetic map showing the average number of thunderstorm days per year. Dallas has 60 to 70 storm days per year. Value 3. The right-hand side is a mean ground flash map showing the average number of air-to-ground strikes per square kilometer per year. Dallas has 5 to 8 strikes per year. Value 2. F3. Voltage of the installation. 480 volt. Value 3. F4. Electrical configuration. 3 phase Y. Value 3. F5. Short circuit current rating. The SCCR at the point of install. The SCCR should be listed on the riser diagram. If not, calculate the value. Divide the application full load amps by 0 .055, assuming 5.5% impedance, which will be very close to the SCCR required for this specific application. The example, 4,000 amps, divided by 0 .055 equals 72 kA, value 5. F6, SPD installed at service entrance with automatic transfer switch, value 8. F7, criticality of the load, a data center having a high criticality, value 10. The selected values are totaled and shown in bottom row 8. The example total is 43. Seven applications, A to G, can be completed on a single spreadsheet. See the example application, total 43, in Table A, which defines the recommended surge current rating per mode, i.e. 300 kA, and the Thor product series, i.e. TSR 300. Note, See Table B for overcurrent protection device. The OCPD for TSR is a 60 amp. For the TSN, it's a 30 amp. To configure the complete Thor part number, fill in the 10 terms of nomenclature per Table C, which details the complete part number including available product options. Examples, industrial with SADS, fuse disconnect switch, Surge counter, phase loss detection, form C contacts, top or bottom feed. A good ground is essential to assure a properly performing SPD. The installation ground resistance should be measured for each SPD location. Typical ground resistance readings are 5 to 30 ohms. See Table D. Less than 5 ohms is good. If greater than 10 ohms, improvement should be made. We believe you will find this risk assessment spreadsheet to be a very helpful document for accurate sizing and correctly specifying surge protection. Modes of surge protection. How many modes are there in a three-phase wire? See the schematic. There are three ABC to neutral plus 3 ABC to ground plus 1 neutral to ground equals 7 nodes plus 3 line to line equals 10 nodes total. How many modes are required to have surge protection elements? Some manufacturers say all 10 modes must have surge protection elements. See the vector diagram. The three phases A, B, and C across the top of the triangle and a single point at the bottom, which is neutral 
or ground. Which modes offer the lowest clamping levels? The modes having the lowest MCOV rating. Seven modes is the correct answer, as they have the lowest MCOV rating. Three line to ground, plus three line to neutral, plus one neutral to ground equals seven modes. An example. Specifications require 150 kA rating per mode, which equals 300 kA rating per phase. Throw a 7 mode SPD versus a competitor's 10 mode SPD. Thor provides 150 kA line to ground plus 150 kA line to neutral equals 300 kA per phase. Some competitors offer 10 modes. 100 kA line to ground plus 100 kA line to neutral plus 100 kA line to line. 300 kA per phase. A 7 mode SPD provides 50% more surge protection in the modes that matter. At service entrance, most all transient events are line to ground. Within the facility, transient events are typically line to neutral. Seven modes in a Y-configured electrical system is the correct and most effective surge protection solution. The 10 mode is marketing propaganda, as the vector diagram clearly shows. A case study. Commercial Machine Company, a metal working machine shop located in Richmond, Virginia, was having continuous service issues, controllers and logic card failures. Two main spindle motors failed both less than five years old. Continuing research and reboots were causing machine downtime. The business owner asked us for a site survey. We requested expense history and were provided 32 months of prior cost history. Each invoice was reviewed by us and the business owner to confirm they were relative to poor power quality issues being experienced. These invoices reviews established a service downtime cost per month. Thor recommended installing surge protection at service entrance and the panel board's feeding CNC machines plus the well electrical welding department. The incoming communication data lines will also have surge protection. The installation will include correction of identified ground bonding issues. The total investment was $13,840. The return on investment, the ROI, was 5.92 months. Forty months after the installation, we did a case study revealing one electrical issue. One module in the, in the service entrance SPD had failed, which was replaced at no cost. Recap. Case, case study was done after 40 months, minus six months payback. The remaining 34 months times $2,336 savings per month, based on their actual cost, equaled $79,424 of profits, which you're still collecting every day. Another manufacturing operation, Old Dominion Brush. Com commercial Machine and Old Dominion Brush had a business relationship, and their owners had a personal relationship. Commercial Machine had related their success after installing surge protection. Old Dominion bought a new CNC laser cutting machine. Two months passed. Laser was down, main controller failed, controller was replaced, costing $15,000, which is related to commercial machine who ask, have you contacted Thor Systems about surge protection? Their answer was not yet, but we're going to consider it. Two more months passed, the new main controller failed, was replaced again, another $15,000. Thor Systems got a call the next day, we installed surge protection for the Old Dominion Brush's entire facility. The cost was $27,203, including installation, now running over five years without any power quality issues. Surge protection is the least expensive insurance anybody can ever buy. It's a matter of convincing them it works. Identify and realize profit opportunities. This trifle was created at the request of facility managers 
who were convinced adding surge protection would improve their operations. However, senior management, the CEO and CFO, will not approve the expense. Can Thor Systems help provide the understanding and cost justification for the investment? We believe the answer is yes, by providing the following information to senior management. Who is being affected by poor power quality? The company, its owners, staff, and their customers. The problem, the United States industry spends over $200 billion a year. This cost by sector, commercial businesses, 73%, 14.9 million businesses, industrial businesses, 25%, 1.6 million facilities. Inexpensive components cause large financial losses. Fail logic cards, controllers, equipment down, waiting on service. System lockups, reboots, restarts, logic cards, and controller failures cause production and automated process downtime. Overtime expenses to make up for lost production time. Customers cost of poor power quality we recommend looking at two categories and their own budget. Category 1. Maintenance expenses. Record the money spent on the following items. Switch gear and electrical distribution. Emergency and mission critical equipment. Motor controls, rewinds, and replacements. Building maintenance. Lighting control systems. Telecommunication equipment. Office equipment computers, servers, printers, and copiers, elevators, escalators, security, fire detection, and suppression, HVAC, chillers, and UPS systems. Category 2. Miscellaneous expenses. Record costs for lost operating efficiency, machines down, shortened equipment longevity, system availability, Equipment is down, waiting on parts and service, late deliveries, unnecessary lockups, reboots, and restarts, material losses caused by process interruptions, increased inventory to bridge the interruptions, add expenses from maintenance and miscellaneous categories. Implementing surge protection can yield 30 to 70 percent reduction of these combined costs. Investment ROI is typically less than one year. The savings are ongoing. They become a continuing annuity, a great investment. Data Telecom Surge Protection Thor Systems Data Telecom Application Table helps determine the respected model number for specific Data Telecom applications. Listed across the top of the table are applications by voltage, including 150-volt phone, fax, or DSL, 48-volt ISDN, 48-volt POEA, 24-volt 4 to 20 milliamp current loop, 12-volt RS-232 and RS-485, 5-volt CAT5 and CAT6. Connection method options are listed in column 1 and include terminal screw, RJ45 ports, RJ45 to 110 punch down, D sub connectors, wire leads, 110 punch down blocks, and 66 punch down blocks. Manning type options are listed in column 2 and include DIN rail, wall mount, inline, 19 inch rack, 19 inch patch panel, and 1 half inch NPT hub. Termination quantities are listed in column 4 and include one, two, or four pair, up to 48 RJ45 ports, and nine, 15, or 25 pin D sub connectors. Product images are defined in the figure column and are shown under the chart. See figures A through L. We find this chart very helpful in applying surge protection for data telecom applications. Other examples of data telecom like commercial and residential SPDs. Coax SPDs 1, 2, and 4 port devices 
one half inch NPT hub mount for the 20 milliamp current loop device. TSN 240 volt single phase, light commercial and residential SPDs. TSN Compact 2 and 3 phase AC SPDs for small business and residential. Four phone lines and one coax module. And a TSN residential flush mount cover. Mac Victor Power Network. Provides clean and continuous power with battery backup. Offering 2 and 3 kVA sizes. Its features, it reduces operating and maintenance expenses, eliminates downtime due to software lockups, data errors, hardware failures. True online double conversion UPS provides voltage and frequency regulation to support and protect mission critical applications. As a bypass switch, there's a make before break, provides seamless power during UPS maintenance. Wall mounted design saves vital floor space. Integral shielded isolation transformer. Integral surge protection 40kA input, 40kA output with EFI RFI filtering. It is UL 1778 second edition listed. It's US patented. Its applications are convenience stores fast food restaurants, gas stations, point of sale equipment, back office electronics, customer kiosks, printers and monitors, wastewater controls, location servers and communication racks. The Mac Victor Power Network is a unique solution to eliminate power quality problems and issues. Power quality surge protection presentations. Presentations typically last 60 to 90 minutes. A presentation syllabus and PhD letters. All attendants will receive a letter for continuing education credits, listing a syllabus covering the presentation topics and the total number of contact minutes of the presentation. This letter may be submitted for professional development hours, PDHs. Power quality presentation topics, design philosophy, surge protection devices, SPDs, risk assessment, a SPD sizing guide, modes of protection, system grounding guide, concerns of SPDs integral to switchgear and panel boards, power quality problems and solutions, Data telecom applications, industry standards, IEEE, UL, and CUL, single sheet specs for facility, design build, and bid specs. Other topics discussed performance provided by products that deliver full surge ratings, packaging, modular and non modular SPDs, quality assurance using Six Sigma management by fax. Value, delivering by using two and three tier hybrid designs for surge protection. Stack tracks, low impedance surge pass used to divert transient energy away from critical equipment. Applications, we match surge protection to the environment and equipment criticality. NEMA ratings, status indication, fiberglass and polycarbonate enclosures with clear covers. Surge apps or technical papers addressing specific applications. Most are one page documents. Surge app topics are defined by questions asked during our power quality presentations. These questions come from end users, specifying engineers and our own field sales representatives. They address real issues and provide useful application information. The most read surge apps, SA001, Surge Protection, Wythor Systems, SA004, Risk Assessment Spreadsheet, used for sizing surge protection, 
SA006 Specs Define Effective Surge Protection. Requested topics to be written SA025 All Surge Protection is Not Equal. SA038 Site Survey Why. SA044 Cost of Poor Power Quality. These surge apps can be downloaded from www. ThorSystems.us, or you can sign up to receive a surge app email each month. Single sheet specs. A number of engineers had asked us for single sheet specifications. Thor Systems developed three single sheet specs. First, a design build spec, which lists Thor Systems only. Second, a facility spec in which Thor Systems TSRI SPDs provide the life of the installation warranty, plus two alternate manufacturers. Third, a bid spec which lists Thor Systems plus two other manufacturers, Current Technology or Liebert, Emerson, Vertif, Nowasco. The single sheet specs define SPD KA ratings. VPR ratings, both to assure surge protection performance. The UL and NEMA standards help define product value. All four systems single sheet specifications are without sales propaganda. Multi-page specifications. Our design bill and bid specifications define where to place surge protection, correctly sizing surge protection KA per mode and KA per phase, select the SPD series modular or non-modular, select how to feed, i.e. bottom feed, specification format. These specifications are open, non-proprietary, offering options, not mandates. They are Microsoft Word documents created in CSI format with selectable form fields. Three manufacturers are listed with their specific product series. First, Thor Systems, TSR, and TSN series. Second, Current Technology, SL3, and TG series. Third, Liebert, Emerson, Vertif, now ASCO, 570 and 520 series. The last two pages of the multi-page specs or engineering notes, addressing terminology, industry standards, applications, connections, and risk assessment based sizing guides. We offer the service of reviewing existing SPD specifications, suggesting changes to bring them in compliance with the latest industry standards, and specifying SPDs which provide high performance, longevity, and good value. There is a serious concern regarding specs that mandate SPDs must be integral to switch gear and panel boards and must be provided by the switch gear manufacturer. First, collateral damage. Second, serviceability having arc flash concerns requires the same personnel protection equipment, PPE, which must be used for access to the switchboard or panel. Third, direct bus mounted SPD failures can result in system shutdowns and corrupt corruption of existing distribution equipment. Fourth, integral SPDs are typically lower performance SPDs. Fifth, the customer often pays an inflated cost hidden in the electrical switchgear package. Sixth, integral SPDs eliminate competition, offering higher performance, better value products. We believe the most effective means of addressing this issue is defining the reasons why search protection should be external to the switchgear and panel boards. We are pleased to send you any or all of these specifications. A reference document, Surge App SA006, Specs Define Effective Surge Protection. These are two SPD spec sheets. TSR modular and TSN non-modular SPDs. 
both define general information, UL listing, applications, warranty, electrical specifications, voltage configurations, recommended circuit breaker size, SCCR, mechanical specifications, enclosure type, and SPD physical size, input terminations, surge specifications, KA per mode, MCOV, hybrid design, monitoring, product options, surge counter, extended filter, form C contacts, features and benefits, low impedance surge paths, TPMOVs, performance data, voltage let through levels, model nomenclature, and part number makeup. These are the Thor Systems facilities located in Richmond, Virginia. Incorporated December 2003. First surge protection manufactured to complete UL 1449 third edition, a full two years before the mandatory compliance date. A totally new third generation product set the pace of change rather than reacting to change. You have an open invitation to visit with us. Have a power quality surge protection presentation. See our facility, our products, and their defined manufacturing processes. We believe you will find the visit to be informative and a good utilization of time. We encourage and look forward to your visit with us. These photos show our production areas. We are committed to company and product performance using Six Sigma principles, management by facts, which is an integral part of our production processes. We are focused on continuous improvement by identifying and preventing defects in the product manufacturing. Dedicated workstations are set up having only the tools and inventory components required to support a specific assembly operation. Examples are multiple high temperature soldering stations are required to heat and flow solder on parallel heavy copper circuit boards. Committed inventory supply bins are also arranged to support individual product sets, such as TSR modular back pan assemblies using multi-tile design and the TSN non-modular design which uses single tile design. We use more than 50 custom wiring assembly fixtures, which are keys in providing the correct configurations used during the production processes. Our production staff takes great pride in assuring very accurate assembly and dress right dress, specifically oriented and color coordinated wiring, which is inspected at assigned pre-test points throughout the production processes before being moved to final testing and packaging. Production processes continued. The first left-hand photo is showing final production testing stations. Each individual product must have full rated voltage applied during the testing procedures. The right-hand photo shows eight Mac Victor power networks being assembled. Thor Systems' objective is to redefine product value in our marketplace, provide uncompromising performance and execution for all with whom we conduct business. This concludes our presentation. If there are any questions, we welcome you to visit our website, thorsystems.us, or send us an email, sales at thorsystems.us, or give us a call, 804-355-1100. We appreciate your time and interest. We look forward to becoming your power quality partner and source for surge protection by offering products and services that provide protection from the more obvious external to the more frequent internal transient events. Thank you for your time.